Children, when I was in school, I once was given an st- interesting test. It was called a test for following directions. So the first step was to read all the steps before beginning. There were about 30 steps. And so I started, and after about 10 of them, I got tired of reading them, and I just began to do the assignment. And so it was... It's, it, it directed me to draw a square in the corner of the page and then to, to draw a flower in that square and to do all these really silly things. But at the end, the very last step, it was read, ignore all the steps after the first step. That is, that was all useless. I was not supposed to do that. And so it wasted a lot of time of doing that and I failed the test. I think this is kind of suggestive of what I wanted to talk about today, that is laziness. We often get busy about many things that are not important and then we miss the one thing that we should be doing. That is what the Jews did all the time and our Lord, he had to correct them during his life. Laziness, remember children, it's not a lack of activity. Laziness is to not be doing what you should be doing. So the scribes and Pharisees, they were very energetic, very busy all the time in adding to their law, to the law of God, they added their own laws. They did these things because they wanted to be become better. They wanted to improve. So what they came up with was you had to wash your hands before doing really anything. You had to wash your hands all the time. You had to wear very fancy garments. And they had all these extra things they made up. Not necessarily bad, but the problem was that they began to forget what they really, what is really most important. So our Lord, today in the gospel, he arrives in the temple. And what does he find? The scribes and Pharisees are selling. They're selling animals outside the, right outside the, uh, the, the church. Our Lord, he overthrows the tables, and he tells them, my house is a house of prayer. They neglect they neglected to pray. That was their first duty as priests. They were instead busy about selling animals for people to buy so that they could offer sacrifices. And then it says afterwards, when our Lord rebuked them, they, they actually said wicked things against him. They would not listen to him. And so he left. And where did he go? It says he went to Beth- Bethania, a neighboring town, that is where the house of Martha and Mary Magdalene uh, uh, was situated, and there he went. And the name of that town, Bethania, it means house of obedience. Our Lord teaches us by his actions today that what he wants first and foremost from us is obedience. We obey by doing first and foremost, our duties in state. If you're a student, it's to be diligent in your classes, to do your homework. And there are many other things we can do in our daily lives, and we have a lot of freedom to choose. But we should never neglect, we should never take more importance on those things we do freely from the things that we are asked to do, because obedience, remember, is the first law. We have to be obedient to our Lord, obedient to our superiors. So what we can do today, and what you can remember as a lesson, children, do not harden your hearts when somebody complains against you, whether it's a superior or even just a fellow a classmate. Because when people complain about something we are doing, they usually have a there is usually a good reason for it. They may not do it in the kindest of ways, but we should 
receive the correction, the complaint, and think about it. See how true it is, and then that is what we should work on. That's how we will, we will improve definitely because we have definite things that we can work on. And that's a good practice during Lent so that we are not like the Jews. When our Lord complained, they rejected the complaint. We will receive all complaints for love of our Lord and we will improve. May God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.